Hello, my name's Dustin Kirkland. I'm a product manager at Google, and I'm joined here by Ricardo Rocha. Ricardo gave a keynote from his experience as a computer engineer at CERN IT working on the Higgs boson experiment. Ricardo, can you give us uh, maybe a short recap of uh, your keynote? Right, so the initial goal that we had um, when we first came here was to try to reproduce the, the analysis that uh, actually ended up being a Nobel Prize, uh, gave a Nobel Prize to, to some uh, theoretical physicists, which is the discovery of uh, the Higgs boson. And uh, we wanted to redo really the analysis using new technologies, Kubernetes and other cloud native technologies. The initial experiment, uh, the initial analysis was done in 2012, or just before and announced in uh, just a year after. And uh, we had to use a lot of computing resources and we just wanted to show how much easier it is using like more recent technologies after a couple of years. So the initial analysis takes hours or even a day, uh, and we wanted to do it in three minutes. Uh, so that was the goal. It was quite uh, challenging, but uh, it actually worked. So it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Three minutes to reproduce the results of the original Higgs boson experiment. Yeah. yeah. So initially we were trying to target because we had a 20-minute slot. So we started targeting at 15 minutes. And then we realized that uh, actually using, uh, uh, with the help of the Google Cloud, we could, could go faster. So we ended up doing it like three, four minutes. Yeah. Wow. Uh, can you give us just a sense of some of the differences between running that sort of compute on-prem, on your own infrastructure, versus running in a hosted uh, cloud with Google? Right. So it just changes our focus. Uh, like We have a large data center, but large in the sense of like science of course like if you look at facebook or google or all these big uh, public cloud providers uh, it's different scale so in in our own environment we know it very well we know how to tune for it uh, but we also have to spend a lot of time maintaining these resources when we go to the public cloud to the google cloud uh, we focus more on learning uh, the details but we don't have to focus so much on the infrastructure we can focus more on the application which is kind of a benefit for us so we can be in a higher level uh, Focus, yeah. Right, so you can spend your time a bit more and your investment a bit more on the experiments and the data itself rather than managing the infrastructure? Right, uh, yeah, that's exactly it. Uh, there's still some advantages to have our own data center for some of the workloads because they are very close to the experiments. Uh, so the experiments are uh, basically on, on site, so we can pull links and have very fast links and uh, process the data very fast, low latency. But for a lot of our workloads, um, yeah, Going to the public cloud allows us to burst also for extra capacity when we need it uh, and focus more on the application side. Can you give us just a sense of the amount of resources you need for this experiment? CPUs, memory, disk, uh, you know, you told us time, but you know, the other, uh, the other, the other bits. Right, so the experiments are, are generating something like one petabyte a second, which is way too much. So we have these hardware triggers, uh, filters, and software filters, and we reduce to something like 10 gigabytes a second. That's what we're storing. So in total, we are generating 70 petabytes a year of new data uh, that we have to analyze. And in-house, we have around 300,000 cores, but then we use a distributed uh, computing environment uh, where we double that. So we need something like 700,000 cores uh, to process all this data. Uh, yeah, so that's the roughly, in, in house we have a total of 400 petabytes of storage this, uh, right now. Wow, wow. Give us a sense of what's coming next. Maybe something, uh, another experiment, or, or how you you plan to use the on-prem versus the, the Google Cloud infrastructure in the future. So that's uh, very exciting for us because uh, the accelerator is now during an upgrade phase and we'll have one more uh, run. Uh, but then what's coming next is much more exciting. We, we call it the high luminosity LHC and the reason it's high luminosity is actually because we generate uh, a lot more collisions, so a lot more data. So we are increasing the amount of data we have to process by a hundred times. And right now we don't really know how we'll manage all of this, uh, both on the storage side and the computing. So we're investing a lot in uh, machine learning uh, and uh, learning how to use uh, better GPUs and potentially TPUs. And uh, of course, because we have a limited amount of resources in-house, we're looking a lot to expand to the public clouds, to have more resources, but also to be able to use new uh, technologies like TPUs and things like this. But yeah, it's very exciting. And last question, can you give us a sense of which of the Google Cloud products you, you, were, you were making use of here? 
Right, so we, we based uh, most like the world deployment on GKE uh, for, for Kubernetes, managed Kubernetes, but we actually also used uh, Google Cloud Storage to, to host the data and we were reading from it. And then we had to publish the results. Uh, at CERN we were using Redis, so at Google Cloud we were using uh, Google Cloud Memory Store, which is the equivalent. So we, we kind of span a lot and yeah, we could even do more probably if we invest a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Ricardo, this is fascinating. Thank you so much. Thank you.